With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. The Eric Erickson Show across the nation. Delighted to have you. The phone number, 877-973-7425. Uh, there's a lot going on today, but my gosh, the show prep is easy because you know what you're going to talk about. If you're just tuning in, uh, as I mentioned at the end of the last hour, uh, my wife's scans are fine. Again, thank you very much for the prayers. Um, I, I'm, I'm a little bit resentful that I'm, I'm here with you actually live, uh, as opposed to was sneaking off pre-recording and being with her, but it was important and she understood uh, the nature of the job sometimes uh, sometimes requires that I have to carry my equipment when we go on vacation in case there's big news. I just I don't like being on vacation and there's big breaking news and I've got no way I got to rely on a guest host. No, uh, you guys are listening to the Eric Erickson show. You shouldn't be listening to my guest host when there's big breaking news. Uh, and I, I, I can't pre-record because I want to take your calls on this. It's just the nature of the job. Uh, and, and we get it. It's it's. This job is kind of my mistress to a degree, my second wife. Um, I don't know how the Mormons do it. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Uh, I, I got. I want to take your phone calls. We've got a lot of people who are on the phones. 877-973-7425. Before I get to your phone calls, though, and I'm going to get to phone calls in this segment. But I've got I, I, I've to play this audio again from Chuck Schumer. I... I this audio, it strikes me. It, it's just, it's it's striking. And I want you to listen to Chuck Schumer and then just hear me out for just a moment. It's news from South Florida tonight that the FBI has, has searched the home of the former president. Yeah, well, I know nothing about it other than what I've read, like everybody else. So I think it's wise for me to withhold comment until we learn more. I appreciate that. I do have to tell you that one of your... Um, not colleagues, but another congressional leader, the uh, House Republican leader, Kevin McCarthy, just made a statement online um, about the FBI search for executing the search warrant at the former president's home. Um, he said when Republicans take back the House, they will conduct immediate oversight of this department. And then he says this, quote, Attorney General Garland, preserve your documents and clear your calendar, effectively threatening Attorney General Garland uh, in response to the FBI having executed this search warrant tonight. I know that you don't want to talk about the substance of the matter at no. Mar-a-Lago, but I do want to ask your reaction to what Mr. McCarthy has Look, said. Look, I think we don't, none of us know the facts and any comments are premature. Okay. That's striking to me. I mean, Chuck Schumer never misses the opportunity to take a dig at Trump and Kevin McCarthy. And yet he didn't want to engage. Here, Here's the problem. The Democrats have passed their Inflation Reduction Act. And their Inflation Reduction Act, everyone is widely in agreement, doesn't actually do anything to fight inflation, which is the chief concern. We'll get inflation numbers tomorrow. And what's everybody talking about now? Everybody's talking about this. The Democrats had this um, impressive win, if you want to call it that. I wouldn't, but that's what it's called in the media. Multiple headlines over the weekend about Biden's great week. Biden's awesome. Biden scoring wins. They got this big win in the Senate. Congress is working despite a 50-50 Senate. All the oxygen is sucked out of the room now. The Republicans, according to ABC News polling, are already more excited to go vote than Democrats and suddenly even more excited, inflamed, if you will, to go vote now. They want the Republicans to take back the House and the Senate now so that they can have some accountability. 
investigating the FBI, cutting off the funding. The entire Democratic message this week was premised on we passed this massive piece of legislation that's designed to help everything and everyone. I mean, listen to Joe Biden talk about this. We've never done this before, but because of a number of things we got done on a bipartisan basis, like a billion, two hundred million dollar infrastructure project, like what we're doing today, we passed yesterday, helping take care of everything from health care to God knows what else. What we're going to do is we're going to see, for example, if they got to put a new water line in in the community. There's no reason why they can't at the same time be digging a line that puts in a whole new modern line for internet connections why why can't we do that Uh, deep thoughts by joe biden notice he didn't really mention inflation the democrats uh twitter feed just put this out the inflation reduction act will lower health care and prescription drug costs lower energy costs reduce the federal deficit make the largest investment to combat climate change in u.s history make corporations pay their fair share in taxes Where's the part about reducing inflation? Where's the part about fighting inflation? It's not there. The White House stenographers in the press, here's, for example, Politico headline, Biden suddenly is piling up wins. Can Democrats make it stick? They can't talk about that now, can they? That's been buried. It's been buried by the FBI. It's been buried by Merrick Garland. Now, the Democrats will say, well, they left us out of this. This was not a political decision. This was a decision about justice, and we had to go where justice lied. They have to follow the trail. They have to enforce the law. No man, after all, is above the law. They had to do this. They did not have to do it. They didn't do it to Hillary Clinton. In fact, one of the big complaints about, uh, what's his name, at, at the time at the FBI, what, 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 um, he told me was that he released that letter and possibly threw the election to Trump before they settled on Rush to stole the whole thing. They didn't have to do it, but they did. In the run-up to a national midterm election, they did this. They could have waited until the day after. If it was really about documents, those documents have not been destroyed. They won't be destroyed between now and the election. They could do it the day after the election and not affect anything, but they didn't want to wait. Now, the spin on MSNBC is, well, it must be really bad if they did it now. You can't believe this analysis at MSNBC. What you can believe is this. Everyone's talking about the FBI today. The day after the Democrats' supposed massive win, the day after the Democrats' massive legislation, the day after the Democrats passed the It Will Fix Everything, Save Everything, and Fight Inflation Act, but let's not talk about Inflation Act. Nobody is talking about it now. They're talking about this. That is why Chuck Schumer was so demure on on MSNBC. That is why the Democrats are not enthusiastic behind the scenes about this. This is why the Senate Democratic leaders are furious. Politico today says the Senate leans Republican now in 2022. Republican voters are furious now and they are fired up. Independent voters are a little bit concerned that this White House is going after the former president. That's what banana republics do. They understand it. You can say, well, no president ever left the White House like Donald Trump. I get that. But you don't do it in this way. And the fact that they did distracts everybody from everything the Democrats wanted to talk about, forces the Democrats to talk about this. At a time they're expanding the federal government by 87,000 IRS agents, it's not a good look for the current administration. It's not a good look for the Democrats. It's not a good look for people who want you to trust the government. It takes the Democrats completely off message right as people are starting to pay attention to politics again after summer vacation and school starting back. It's not good for the Democrats at a political level. And Chuck Schumer knows it. Now, as promised, Let's take some of your phone calls. Mark, you're going to be up next on the Eric Erickson Show. Welcome, Mark. How are you? I'm doing great, Eric. I, You know, I can't say mega to those because that was Russia's thing. So I'm going to say God bless and keep doing what you're doing. Thank so, you very much. Yeah. Uh, you know, if they didn't hold Hillary Clinton ca- accountable for her private email server, for 30,000 mm-hmm. emails deleted for smashed phones that were evidence and uranium deals and all the rest of it, they need to leave Trump alone. 
Yep. I mean, I in in the, I just having a conversation Sunday with a friend of mine about the upcoming 2024 election, and I'm I'm a Cruz guy. I worked Cruz's campaign in 2016. I'm all for Trump now, 100 percent, because you can't let them do this and not hold them accountable. And, you know, and if he's getting enough people in place across the country through the the people he's backing in elections, when he gets in there in 2024, he's going to have enough support to clean house. And that's what we need. Look, I mean, so here's here's the thing, and this is really, really, really important here, is I have seen overnight a lot of people who were saying, okay, he can only get four more years. Somebody like DeSantis could get eight. Suddenly like, nope, we got to stand up for this guy now. Um, and part of me wonders if the Democrats are like, all right, we think we can take him, so let's keep him in the spotlight. This will elevate him, get him the nomination. I don't think they're that bright or forward-looking. I, I, I really think... Uh, in the heart of hearts of a lot of the Democrats, they think this has to be done. He's an existential threat to the country. We've got to take him out. And they're too clueless and bad at long-term strategy to realize they're doing nothing but helping this man win a second election. Um, he's probably going to announce any day now and fundraise the snot out of this stuff and raise a ton of money. And the Democrats are going to be completely off message. They want to sell their Inflation Reduction Act. It's the one big thing they've done. And instead... They got to talk about this now. It's not going to be the thing that helps them. Darren, you're going to be up next. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show. Hey, Eric. You kind of stole what I was going to say. It, it, Great um, minds think alike. Don't I, worry I, about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm with you on that. I, I just it baffles me at, at their incompetence. I, I don't I don't real I don't see how someone can be as stupid as they are. So it almost seems on purpose. It almost seems like they're doing stuff on purpose because they're more afraid of DeSantis than they are Trump at this moment. And to be honest with you, I would prefer Trump, even though I voted for him in 2020, for, I would prefer him not run and someone like DeSantis run. So maybe that's why, you know, they, they want a lame duck president and try and get their ducks in a row uh, well, leading I, up to that because they've I mean, been an abysmal failure. Maybe that's it. I, I I really do think that uh, DeSantis and all the other Republicans have a very compelling argument that Trump could only spend four years in office constitutionally. Um, and now, of course, the Democrats say, well, he'll ignore the Constitution. No, he won't. He'll, he, it's four years and then he's done. He would be term limited out. DeSantis could get eight. I think there's a very compelling argument for someone to make that, look, we got to clean up the institutions of government. We got to clean up the FBI. We got to clean up the CDC. We got to clean up the FDA. We got to clean up the freaking post office. Now we got to clean up the IRS. It's going to take eight years to undo the damage and chart a new way forward. That's a compelling message I think one of these people get. But right now, I understand today, August 9th, it is plant the flag. We must defend Donald Trump. I, I totally get that. And I think the problem for the Democrats is one I actually believe the Justice Department that they didn't tip off the White House before they did this. And the reason I believe it is because that standard operating procedure from the Bush administration to Obama to Trump to now, the Justice Department waits until the moment the FBI shows up at the door and then they rush to the White House and say, hey, this is happening right now. And the reason they do it is because they know the White House can't help but leak and someone will get tipped off and they'll completely – evaporate the idea that we're going to go in and try to make this look nonpartisan because the White House would start gloating, so they waited until the last minute. But my gosh, the fact that uh, they didn't think about the political implications. Maybe maybe they overthought the political implications. But either way, they did not, and this is important. It's not. It, it, this is not me saying Donald Trump is above the law. Don't hear me say that. What I am saying is, you don't have to do it this way. There are other ways to do what you want to do that still accomplish your goal. All you've done is given Donald Trump a lot of oxygen to spark a lot of flames, and he's going to do it. And don't be surprised when he does, and that it probably works to generate a massive Republican wave in November bigger than what it was going to be.
Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425. You should be a subscriber to my daily email. You really actually should today of all days. If you text the word data to 33777, the first link will be to it. You can get a lot of the, the news article roundup and summations from me of, of the news and see the Andy McCarthy piece uh, that I think is really important. Uh, one thing you need to understand is the Constitution of the United States uh, sets the parameters of the eligibility of the President of the United States. The executive power shall be vested in a President of the United States. He shall hold office during the term of four years, together with the Vice President, chosen the same term. No person except a natural-born citizen or a citizen of the United States at the time of the adoption of the Constitution shall be eligible to be President of the United States. Neither shall any person be eligible to that office who shall not have obtained the age of 35 years and been 14 years a resident within the United States. Nothing there says a felon can't be president of the United States. I think some of you missed this point on the left. You think this is a grand indictment of the president to uh, prevent him from being able to run in 2024. It doesn't matter. There's actually Supreme Court precedent on this regarding Congress. Remember, a number of states in the 1990s passed term limits legislation saying that uh, if you've served in Congress X number of years, you can no longer serve again. Uh, and then there was another piece of legislation that said uh, you can't be on the ballot in a state if you didn't pay your taxes. And the Supreme Court in both of those cases ruled uh, the requirements for the Constitution override state requirements. That's fine for a state candidate. A provision of the law that says you can't be on the ballot unless you've paid your taxes applies for state candidates. But the federal Constitution governs ballot access for federal candidates. And the federal Constitution says if you are a citizen of the United States who has lived in the United States for 14 years prior to running for president, and you are at least the age of 35 at the time you take office, you get to run for president of the United States. You can be a felon in prison and run for president of the United States because the provisions of the Constitution go, I know you don't know this because nobody teaches the Constitution anymore. But this is constitutional law. There have been people in prison who have run for president of the United States in the past, and their names show up on ballots if they get signatures collected. Why? Because the Constitution governs, and there is well-settled Supreme Court precedent. So all you Democrats who are calling the show or Republicans saying, ah, oh, this is to make sure he can never run for president again. I'm sorry, but it will take two-thirds of both houses of Congress and three-quarters of the states to amend the Constitution to prevent Donald Trump from being president. Uh, if he's a convicted felon, indicted, or otherwise goes to jail, it simply doesn't matter. I know you think it should. Trust me. I get it. You don't think anyone who is in jail should be president of the United States. One, he's not in jail. Two, he's not indicted. Three, he's not a criminal. But in the worst-case scenario for Donald Trump, let's say all that happens, it still doesn't matter. I know you think it should, and at the state level, it matters. Most states prevent people who are in prison from running for office. The federal government is governed by the Constitution. Article 1 and Article 2 set forth the requirements. To be in the House, you got to live in a state and be 25 years old and be a citizen of the United States. To be in the Senate, you got to live in the state, be 30 years old and be a citizen. To be president, you got to live in the nation, be 35 years old, be a citizen, and you can only serve two terms. If you don't like it, you amend the Constitution. Until then, he could be sitting in jail collecting signatures, be on the ballot, and people could vote for him. And you may not like it, but that's the Constitution. Amend it if you don't like it. Welcome back. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number 877-973-7425. Uh, thanks to my buddy Jason, who reminded me of the name I was thinking of. Uh, a friend of mine texted me and said, what about the 14th Amendment? Let me read you the text of the 14th Amendment. Uh, it's important that you hear this, those of you who doubt me on this. 
No person shall be a senator or representative in Congress or elector of president and vice president or hold any office, civil or military, under the United States or any state who, having previously taken an oath as a member of Congress or as an officer of the United States or as a member of any state legislature or as an executive or judicial officer of any state to support the Constitution of the United States, shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof, but Congress may, by a vote of two-thirds of each house, remove such disability. The United States Supreme Court held that specific provision, Section 3, in context only applies to people who are on the side of the Confederacy. Um, It doesn't apply to other crimes against the United States. Eugene Debs was the founder of the American Socialist Party in 19, oh, 19, what is it, Um, 1920, uh, ran for the United States presidency. He was in prison while doing so and was permitted to do so. Uh, Very important Uh, To understand that he, the uh, section three of article of the 14th amendment only applies to people who helped the Confederacy uh, and does not apply to uh, anything else. Um, So you got to, you got to keep that in mind. Now, for example, um, there is another thing here. Uh, I'm getting uh, Christy fears emails me. Uh, And she cites uh, Section 2071 of the U.S. Code, 18 U.S.C. 2071. Whoever willfully and unlawfully conceals, removes, mutilates, obliterates, destroys, or attempts to do so with intent to take and carry or any way record, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, shall be fined and imprisoned. Whoever does so shall forfeit his office and be disqualified from holding any office under the United States. Uh, Christie needs to listen to me and not doubt me on this stuff. There is well-settled provisions in the federal law and of the United States Supreme Court precedent. It does not matter. I know Christy will disagree because she clearly thinks that I should know this stuff, but she clearly doesn't understand her constitutional law. Don't mean to pick on her, but she should have just listened to me. It doesn't matter. Go read Andy McCarthy on this um, or read the qualification provisions uh, of the United States Supreme Court's decisions on the qualification clauses for federal candidates. Congress cannot pass a law that precludes someone from holding elected office outside the bounds of the Constitution without administering it. So, if you understand well-settled Supreme Court precedent that Congress can pass no law restricting who can become an elected representative or president of the United States, and then you read this, The person shall forfeit his office and be disqualified from holding any office under the United States. How must we reconcile the two? Well, we must reconcile the two by meaning it applies to offices other than president, vice president, and members of Congress. So you cannot be a cabinet secretary. You cannot be a deputy cabinet secretary. You cannot even be the head of the post office. But you can be elected president of the United States of America. This isn't hard, folks. This is Supreme Court precedent on this sort of stuff. You don't like it, take it up with the Supreme Court, not me. I'm telling you what the law is. You can't preclude Donald Trump under um, 18 U.S.C. 2071 from being elected president of the United States again. It's a fairly settled matter in the United States Supreme Court. And by the way, it's a 6-3 conservative Supreme Court. Good luck on getting them to read something into the Constitution that's not there. God bless you people for trying, but I mean, this isn't hard. Okay. We got to move on. I got a lot of people on hold. I want to take their phone calls. Ruth Mary has been waiting very patiently. Ruth Mary, you're up next. Welcome to the show. Uh, thank you. And I wanted to, uh, I'm glad your wife's uh, results came back with good news. And I will be having mass said for you, for her and your family for one year through the St. Benedict's uh, 
Latin priest. Thank you. They do a daily mass. Um, and I'm glad, she, and I thank her for sharing her, uh, you with your listeners so that we can hear what you have to say and where we need to go and get the information for us to make our our decision. So I thank her that she was willing to share you, especially today. Thank you. Um, the IRS, this whole business uh, of them becoming larger than three other government um, entities is, is, is upsetting, and people are forgetting that the IRS, did they not try on the, it was Lois Lerner, they were going to go after the Tea Party people, and, you know, that it was coming out that, I mean, that was a big argument, uh, the, how they were going to go after people, and I think we have to be careful with what this um, increase of the IRS is, because um, they will come after us, and, the, and for them to say, well, if you're doing it right, you don't have to worry about it. Well, hello, there's some, there's so many complications to the tax law. My husband and I, because of having my on my parents' side an estate thing, I have to go to H&R Block to have my taxes done. So that means from here on in, just to protect myself, I may pay for that extra cost for them to be there in case we get audited. So I know just what the heck is going on. I'm sure H&R Block and all of them are like, hoo-hoo, we're going to get more money off of people because they're going to need us there because we don't know the ins and outs. It's not that we're doing anything wrong. We just don't know all the technicalities, and we don't know what they're trying to pull on us. I wouldn't trust the IRS or the FBI to, um, you know, to say, oh, if you don't have anything to – Hi, you know, you're okay. What do you need a lawyer for? Because I don't know everything you are going to try and do, and I need a legal person to say, oh, no, 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 they're going to go to this way, and I may not catch everything. So I, I just don't understand why um, they're increasing the IRS. On I, They are going to go after the rest of us. Oh, they, they absolutely the are. Senate. It's just, it, it's obvious to me, and, and frankly, it's obvious to them the fact that uh, I, I paid – played the audio yesterday and, and Ruth Mary thanks for the phone call of, of Jared Bernstein the president's senior economic advisor who refused to even answer the question on CNBC they gave him four minutes and kept asking him and he would not talk about who the IRS is going after they're going after you if you're in the gig economy if you're an uber driver a lyft driver uh do instacart you're going to be targeted by the IRS remember this is the democratic party that wanted your bank and Venmo app to notify the IRS if you transferred $500 a month or more. And now, instead of doing that, they're just hiring 87,000 new agents. That's, by the way, the size. Those of you who have ever been to a football game at Auburn University, that's, that's the size of their football field or football stadium, can hold all these IRS agents. It's more than uh, Notre Dame can hold. It's more than the Green Bay Packers can hold in their stadium. That That's how many IRS agents are being hired. More IRS agents are being hired than could fit at Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin, of which I'm a part owner. I'll just note that for the record. <laughs> okay. It's just, it, it's, it's, it, it, it's funny watching the Democrats on this, by the way. So the Democrats went from defund the police to give the FBI and IRS all our money. They can do no wrong and everyone is innocent. Uh, Whatever happened to Breonna Taylor? Oh, wait, she died. Police doing a search. She was innocent. She was killed. And today... The Democrats, well, if you're innocent, you have nothing to worry about when the police come calling. Uh, Breonna Taylor is not available for comment on this. George Floyd, not available for comment on this. It's fascinating to watch the Democrats. And they'll say, well, suddenly the Republicans want to defund the police. No, 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 no. No, the Republicans want answers from the FBI. And the FBI is not the police. The FBI is the Federal Bureau of Investigation. It's not a police department. In fact, Republicans who believe in limited small government have very consistently over time said these issues should be dealt with at the state level, not the federal government level. We do not need an expansive federal police state. Republicans have been very, very clear on this. The FBI is not out there cracking down on crimes like standard law enforcement at the state level. Uh, Republicans are very... Very happy to fund state-level police agencies and entities. What's remarkable here is the Democrats want to get rid of 
all of the agencies that fight crime, but they want to fund all the agencies that can persecute and prosecute their political opponents. Hello, Lois Lerner and the IRS. You get 87,000 more people to persecute Democratic political opponents. Hello, FBI. You get more money to persecute the opponents of the Democrats. The Democrats out there saying, well, we can trust the government, and if you're innocent, you have nothing to worry. Whatever happened to good old-fashioned liberals? You know, the good old-fashioned liberals stand up to the man, fight the man. Now they're like, oh, the, what the man says, you better go get your monkeypox vaccine, people. Whatever happened to the traditional old-school liberals who did not trust government? Now they're all like, well, if Joe Biden's in charge, we can trust everything they say. Uh, I would prefer small government, and I want to be very clear on this. I believe in small government because I'm a Christian. It is a faith-based belief for me in part, not all, but in part because I believe we're all sinners. I want as few in charge of me as possible. The government that is best is the government closest to me, the government I'm most familiar with, the elected leaders I am most familiar with. Uh, Washington should do far less. One of the reasons we are in the state of anxiety we are today as a nation is because Washington is so expansive and does so much. We all focus on Washington, D.C. at the expense of our local government because we live in absolute Object fear on both sides of Washington, D.C., depending on who is in charge of Washington. That is not the way the founders designed this country. It is not the way the country is supposed to work. The fact that you and I, based on who is in charge of Washington, shapes our view of the country is deeply unhealthy, is antithetical to the history of this country, and suggests to me that we should, all of us, Democrat and Republican, be fighting for Washington to do far less because it's clear right now, look at the monkeypox situation, look at COVID, look at all this stuff. Washington, D.C. is incapable of doing as much as it is doing. It should do the very least it can do as well as it can, and there are 50 states that can do the rest. Just give some block grants to the states and let them take care of it. It's ridiculous. It is absurd that Washington, D.C. is doing as much as it does, and it can't do any of it well right now. It's time to reign in Washington. And it's time, Democrats, for you to stop thinking, if you're innocent, you have nothing to worry about. For the last several years, you've been burning down businesses across America and your riots about abuses of Washington and government and police. And now suddenly you're like, oh, no, government can do no wrong. Um, really? You kind of were on the opposite side of that. And based on who's in Washington should not uh, position you as to whether or not you believe government or not. All of us should at all times be skeptical the powers of government, particularly of the federal government. One thing you don't have to be skeptical of is the power of the Eden Pure Thunderstorm to be able to get rid of odors. I have been running this thing on the back. So we got, so I've got a glassed in back porch and it just, it's got this smell and I finally had enough of it. I'd run a, a big air purifier with the giant filters, the charcoal filters and stuff. And it's just not keeping up with whatever it is. So I put my little bitty uh, Eden Pure Thunderstorm, hold it in the palm of my hand, plugged it into the wall of the back porch and the odor is gone. It may come back, but for now it's gone. I don't know what's causing it. I got to find that out. But right now, the Eden Pure took care of it. I mean, I literally have a $1,000 smoke eater air purifier uh, with massive filtration systems, and it did not work as well as the Eden Pure to eliminate the odor. Now, I don't typically use my Eden Pure as an air filter to get rid of the dust and the mildew and the pollen and the mold, although it does that. I use it to wipe out odors. So I keep one in my suitcase when I travel. I will put it in a rental car if someone's been smoking in the rental car or my hotel room if it's an old building and it's musty or has that mildewy smell you can sometimes get. And it just takes care of the odors. And you can get three of them right now by going to EdenPureDeals.com. EdenPureDeals.com. The discount code is Eric3, E-R-I-C-K-3. You get three of them for less than $200. You're saving $200 and you get free shipping. Uh, they're great little products. I keep one in my suitcase. Well, I did, except I've taken it out and put it on the back porch to get rid of that smell, and it worked. It has worked in cars that have, well, uh, possibly some stray cigar odors in the car. Just wipes it out, takes care of it. EdenPureDeals.com. The discount code is ERIC3. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number 877-973-7425. I want to squeeze in a few more phone calls here. Josh, I want to go to you next. Welcome to the show. Josh, how are you? Hey, Eric. I'm good. How are you? Great. Uh, 
I'm first off. I'm 19. I'm probably one of your younger listeners. Uh, and I am a conservative, and I wanted to ask you, uh, kind of, what does all this corruption in the government mean for the, the your younger audience and the younger people of this nation? Oh gosh, that's a great question. Um, first, thanks for listening. Um, here's the thing: I we all have an obligation to take our government and our role in government as citizens extremely seriously and to fight corruption where we find it. Uh, nations that allow their governments to increase in corruption, uh, unaided or, or unabetted and, and un, unstopped by the citizens, are nations that really do turn into third world kleptocracies. And there are a lot of people in the nation right now who believe we are a banana republic, essentially. The problem here, and, and I actually want to spend a lot of time, and so so please keep listening to me, Josh, in, in the next uh, half hour. I want to spend some time on this. The problem is we should not define whether or not we believe government is working based on who's in charge. And a lot of people are. Um, I don't believe this is the end of the republic, as a lot of my friends on the right suddenly believe. And I don't believe that Trump is the threat to democracy that a lot of people on the left believe. Um, I think that it's it's more nuanced and also more complicated. Uh, I do think that the federal government has a, um, a an issue of trust. And I think that's the big issue here. More than anything else, the lack of trust in government at a bipartisan basis, it extends beyond who's in charge to so many more facets of government that politically both sides need to work on restoring trust. And I think the way to do that is to have some good bipartisan commissions in Congress. I mean, do another church-style commission uh, that was used to clean up the CIA back in the day and, and start cleaning up these agencies. The CDC, forget the FBI for a minute, the CDC is an agency that cannot speak clearly, plainly, and boldly on what they declare a national health emergency monkeypox because they're afraid of hurting people's feelings. You were not afraid of hurting our feelings when you made us stay away from our grandparents, but you're afraid of hurting people's feelings over participating in orgies lest they be stigmatized. What's going to be a bigger stigma? Getting monkeypox at the orgy where everybody's getting it or getting it because you came into contact with someone at the orgy and, and everyone presumed, well, I mean, they must be participating in orgies because you allowed the disease to spread by not being bold and clear. We have a lack of trust in our government these days across the board. Now, listen, we got people on the phones and I want to take your phone calls and some of you have been on hold for a while, but I really want to talk about this from a different frame, from a different aspect, from a different perspective, when we come back, something you probably don't typically get on conservative radio, but it's got to be said, and I guess I'm the only person who can say it uh, the way I can say it, so please stick around with me. Uh, the phone number here is 877-973-7425. When we come back, what do we actually do to fix the situation, and are we at the end of the republic? Well... These are questions on people's minds. I want to talk about them when we come back. Hey, guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun, too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VGW group. Void prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.